What's up guys, I'm playing with DIY Creators and today we got a good one for you. So today I'm gonna make another piece for the Limited Tools series. And a while back I made a table saw, a homemade table saw, and I'm going to make a stand basically to rise that up so it's at a working height. So if you're a new subscriber, let me explain. I started the Limited Tools series to help the DIY communities get started in woodworking. Now the first video I made for the series was woodworking for beginners and I cover all the basic hand tools you need to get started and that's pretty much how we got to this point. Now my goal for the series is to help you get started making your own woodworking projects. Now I do have plans for the table saw but I don't have plans yet for the table saw stand so I'm gonna try to make those available as soon as possible. For the past year or so I've been asked to provide a way so that you guys can support what I'm doing. So I just created a Patreon account so that you guys can support your favorite creators like myself. Now any contribution would go a long way and all that would basically be put right back into the show, buying the materials and gear to help me produce even better content. So the bigger the support, the bigger the content. And with that being said, let's get started. So let's get to the rundown on the new upgrades on the homemade table saw. So over here on the door, we have the bits, we have the combination square, and we also have the storage for all the blades. And as we navigate inside the cabinet, we have our screw bins down low. Up top, we have our shelf with a plexiglass front allowing us to see through where we can store all of our finished products. In the bottom right drawer, we have our power tools, our sander, our router, and room for other pieces. And in the top drawer, we have space for our hand tools, razor blades, whatever you want to store up here, staple gun, paintbrush, whatever you want to store here. But my favorite part is this organizer, allowing you to store multiple things up here and also adjustable dividers. See, at the end of the day, it's a tool cabinet, but it's yours. So make it look as nice as you can, because that can totally motivate you to get more done. And from a convenience standpoint, this makes it extremely easy to just detach your table saw and just take it wherever you need to go. But it also lets you just attach it right back and get right back to work. I also added Rockler workbench casters and these allow you to drop the workbench or either lift the workbench and roll it around. And when the fence is not in use, I got you covered. You got a place to store that thing now. So along the back, I think you could be as creative as you want. So I do have a hammer holder and on that same hammer holder, we have a place to store all of our clamps. You can also store your push sticks in the back and on the left hand side, you have your screwdriver holders. You also have this whole space here that you can be as creative as you like. And down in the bottom, I have a saw, a push block and a level. But this is a location where I feel like if you're in the middle of working on something, you could totally just throw all your stuff right down in here, all your hand tools or whatever you have that you can just kind of easily put away. And then this would be a spot that you can clean out later. I'll start by marking the largest pieces first, which is the top and the bottom. Now place your saw guide on top of the mark and then mark out a straight line. You can also find this build in the limited tool series as well. Place a piece of scrap wood on the both ends of the plywood and the purpose of this is to catch the wood once you cut through. The stand would have the same width and depth of the table saw. After measuring out the top then cut off the excess that you do not need. Next, I'm going to rip off the section for the two sides. This saw guide is also from the limited tool series as well. So you can find the video link down in the video description. So the same process over and over again until I get all my pieces cut for the table saw stand. And at this point, I'm going to start marking all the location where I plan to put pocket holes. So as I begin the assembly process, I'm gonna start by adding the lower back panel cause this part would be much tougher to get to if I don't add this piece first. And being that the table saw workstation is also gonna be a workbench as well, I would suggest that you use wood glue on all the joints. That would just provide a much stronger joint. And with the two sides attached, it's time to move on to adding the bottom. It's pretty difficult to get any hold or clamp in a position 
here so i'm going to take a piece of wood place that underneath the bottom and press down on it and this will allow the wood to rise up while allowing me to install the pocket hole screws and now i'm going to install the back to the cabinet and again i'm going to apply wood glue to strengthen the cabinet as a whole next i'm going to mark the bottom because i cannot see where i'm going to place the wood so if i mark the bottom then i draw the line now i have a reference point At this point the back is secured by three points at the bottom and the two sides. Now place the top in the open area and clamp the two sides so that you wedge the top in place. Now there's a lot of pocket hole screws in this build and the good part about it you cannot see them because majority of them are hidden. And of course if you're a more experienced maker you can use any joints that you would like but the pocket holes seem to work really well for most people. At this point, we are limited to the size of cuts we can make on a table saw, and that's all due to because we don't have any wings on a table saw. Those will be a future ads, but for now, we can work within the limits. And at this point, I'm working on the cabinet door, and I cut that a bit larger than it needs to be so I can fine tune that down on the table saw. And this is a stop for both the cabinet door and the drawers. To secure the top, I'm going to use pocket hole screws. At the bottom, I'm going to use a rabbit joint. And with the lack of support going across the front, I decided to add a 2x2 along the front, which should beef it up a lot. And being that I have the cabinet on one side and the two drawers on one side, I need a way to separate the two. So here I'm going to make a divider with a piece of plywood. Then I'll secure it to the drawer stop. But before we get to that, we need to first install the 2x2 piece going across the top. And once you slide the divider in place, you must then check for squaring on all sides. So first I'm going to measure from side to side and make sure that I pull it over as far as I want. Then I'll check for squaring. Right now the two bottom pieces are much lower than the center stop and also the two sides. But what I could have did differently was cut the wood all the way to the end and then notch out the center. But didn't occur to me while I was cutting the wood. The good thing is this isn't an issue that I cannot fix with wood and glue of course. And now I'm going to move on to making the drawers. I'm going to set the fence a quarter inch away from the router bit. It's always a good idea to take a scrap piece of wood and make a test cut before committing with your actual work piece. And if your test cut passed the test, then proceed. To clarify what I'm doing here, each drawer has four sides. So on the inside of all four pieces, I'm gonna make a quarter inch cut from the bottom. And the router bit is quarter inch itself. So each pass through, that's gonna be a groove for the drawer bottom, which I'm using a quarter inch piece of plywood that would sit right in the slot. You'll more than likely have to pass through a couple of times to get to the proper depth. So if you try to take off too much material at one time, you'll more than likely put a lot of wear on the bit itself and also put pressure on the motor. Now there's tons of ways to make up cabinet drawers and in these cases I'm going to show you a simple way to doing them. But of course we're going to get into more advanced way in the future but I really would like to get other people on the page of making so that you get more and more comfortable with doing woodworking. And by all means if you want to go a little more advanced you want to do dados or you want to also do dovetails then go right ahead. And just keeping it simple I'm just going to secure the drawers with pocket hole screws in the front and pocket hole screws in the back. Anytime I'm making up a simple drawer, if I can use these strap clamps, I'm going to use them because I find them very useful. Now it's pretty obvious these doesn't necessarily replace clamps, but for a square of any sort or a rectangle, these are really perfect for those. And what's best about these is that they're the space they take up. You can literally just roll these up and throw them in the drawer. And now I'm going to make a shelf with a plexiglass front and the reason why I add a plexiglass on it give me the ability to see through the shelf while also containing anything that falls over. And countersinking the screw heads not really a big deal but it just give it a better appearance so if you had regular screws with flat heads you can always use those as well. Now it's on to making this organization box and 
a lot of parts but super simple to make i'm using all quarter inch plywood so let's give it a shot and see how well i can explain what i'm doing here so the outer pieces the perimeter of the boxes are all quarter inches taller than the one that's on the interior now the entire box can be made by just gluing but gluing and waiting just take too much time so i'm going to cheat by using a hand staple gun and this should help speed up the process and all the outer pieces are butted up against each other going along the perimeter and of course we apply wood glue to help hold that in place and as we get to the interior all the pieces inside will only be glued so the goal here is to double up on each pieces that's going inside the wall and this will just make it stronger I place them in such way that each pieces are actually supporting another piece. Now at this point everything is purposely glued in exception to the two pieces that are dividers and those pieces are meant to be removable so that you can always make adjustment and make size changes depending on what you plan to store. And after everything is glued, add enough clamps to hold the structure together and allow enough time for the glue to dry. And with the build process moving right along I'm going to install the slides for both drawers then I move the focus over to the drawer tracks. I'm going to use a piece of 3 quarter inch plywood as a spacer while I install the track. The instructions stated that the track should be pushed back 5 16 of an inch or 8 millimeter from the edge. But I use a piece of scrap wood as a template instead of fighting with the tape measure. I kept the cabinet drawer fronts pretty simple, just aligned and attached with a few screws from the inside. Now I did have to take the shelf apart because I couldn't turn the shelf with the plexiglass being attached to it and I couldn't just slide it in because the door stopped actually overhanging to the opening. And before setting the shelf height I want to make sure that it can accommodate for spray paint bottles, finishes and all those sorts of things that I may want to store on top of the shelf. Then secure the shelf from the bottom with a couple pocket hole screws. So I'm going at this with the mindset that many of you do not have all the jigs and tools to accomplish these projects so I'm going to show you real quick how you can install European hinges without any jigs. The first thing you want to do is make a mark that's a quarter inch from the edge. So for the second mark it may vary depending on how large your door is. For such a small door we only need two hinge and I'm going to make a mark that's two and a half inches from the bottom and two and a half inches from the top. Now place the bit on a two and a half inch line and the outside of the bit should be touching the quarter inch line. Now normally I drill down to the top of the bit is flush to the top of the work surface. So be sure you check the video description for more detail on the build and if you're new to this channel don't forget to subscribe if you want to see more projects like this. Now put the hinge in place and take a Phillips screwdriver and press down on the screw holes. This will indent the wood and help you to drive the screw in straight. Now I do the same process when it comes to mounting the hinges onto the cabinet itself and right under the door I have a thin piece of wood to help elevate the door so that it's not sitting flat on the surface. And what's nice about these European hinges, you do not have to be super perfect when you mount them because you do have fine tuned adjustment that you can make. Now I do want the sliding organizer to sit flush to the top of the drawer so I'm going to use spacers to accommodate and help lift the track and use those on the opposite side as well to keep it as a consistent height. Once everything is sanded and smooth, the organizer should slide fairly easy inside the track, but to help that as well, I'm going to use some furniture wax and that should make it move really smooth. Now even with all the clamps I had, I still managed to have a few minor gaps going around the box itself, so I'm just going to take some wood filler, fill in the gap and then sand it down to get a smooth fill across the top. And to help organize your belongings even more, I'm going to make a super quick and simple clamp rack with a hammer holder. So one side of the rack will be supported on one side but the opposite side will be more so suspended. So I'm going to make this piece of wood here, cut two four to fives on it and use it as a bracket. After looking at the rack, I realized I probably should round the edges off on the corners. And you can use a jigsaw or a handsaw, then sand it down to the line. And after looking around in the shop, the best thing I can come up with is a picture hanger and I'm going to use that to hold my measuring tape.
So just to give you a real quick idea on what you could do to help dress up your saw stand, I'm just going to drill a few holes in a piece of wood here and then I'm going to drop my screwdrivers in them and that's really going to be it. And for all of you that haven't made your table saw stand yet, I'd say just go wild with the idea. Maybe you can take a few ideas from this video or hopefully I'll spark some other ideas that you may have to put towards your table saw stand. I'm gonna now move the focus over to the bit holder and right here I got a combination square location so what I did was I drilled a few holes in this location now I'm gonna take the coping saw and remove all the excess that's within the hole now this particular bit holder is only useful for the pocket hole jig bit and also the frosting bits now I do plan to make a regular drill bit holder and if I get the opportunity I'll make sure I place those inside the set of plans and when you have a circular saw, you're more than likely going to have more than one type of blade. So we need a place to store those blades and we're going to put it right on the door. So here I'm going to drill a 3 8 hole so I can insert these threaded inserts. Now there is a tool for these threaded inserts so that you can install them easily. Or you can use a super short screw to then install them. But I had a short screw and somehow I misplaced it along the way. So I had to do it the hard way. And to secure the blade in place, I just use the old threaded furniture feet. Now this sander does a really good job of capturing the sawdust compared to the other one I have. However, all these sanders make a lot of dust and make a huge mess and I always have to spend hours cleaning up and vacuuming everything in the shop. Well, from now on, more than likely I'm going to be sanding outside. So I don't care how dark it is, I will be out there sanding at night. After sanding everything down with 220 grit sandpaper, it's on to painting. And being that I painted the table saw white, I'm going to paint the bottom white as well, but with a twist. I wanted to make the complete project look as if it was one. And to do so, I'm gonna use the same walnut danish oil that I use on the top of the table saw. Next, I'll apply that to the door itself, then I'll apply that to the back of the table saw stand. Now, prior to adding the danish oil, I was a bit iffy because, you know, honestly, you don't know until you see it on the product itself. But I actually like the look, so I played it safe. If I didn't like it, I just would have ran over it with paint. I make it a good practice of putting on the hardware prior to even sanding the product before I even get into the painting stage. And the reason why I do that is so that if I do make a mistake, I can always fix it before. It's a little tough to fix these mistakes once you painted it and you went through all that work. You don't want to accidentally drill something wrong. So I always do it during that stage. So the screws that came with the casters, they're a bit long and they actually protrude through the side of the cabinet and this would interfere with the drawer. So what I'm going to do here is cut the bolt so that it actually fits my application. If cutting the screw become an issue in the future, I can always add a nut and a bolt and that should fix that problem. These casters are made by Rockler and each one of them is rated for 100 pound per. Now on the side of the box, they actually show you the direction on how to install it. I just followed that direction and then I installed the casters. To install the wheels on this workbench, I'm going to mark three inches in from each side and I'm going to center the caster right on those. So the first screw is going to go right within that hole that I just drilled and then I'm going to add the other screw as well. Install the casters and do the same thing all the way around. So one of the features I think that make this build interesting to me is that you can detach the top from the bottom. So if you needed to take the saw somewhere, if I needed to go somewhere and obviously I can't bring my large table saw, nor do I want to bring this table saw with the bottom on it, I can always just detach it and just take this with me on the go. 
I did receive a request about making a table saw fence holder and it just occurred to me that this thing could totally get in the way when you're not using it. So here's my attempt to making something quick and simple as far as a holder that you can just attach to the back of the saw and sit the table saw fence on it. Let's take a look at our new fence bracket and you can see here I have two holes in it and the holes allow us to drive the screw deeper into the wood which provide extra support once you mount it to the back of the table saw. Now using that 1x2 actually worked as a helping hand because I didn't have to measure the gap or the spacing between the fence and the tabletop. 